John One-Eyed McGovern is rooming with Martin. <laughs> so I'm really not feeling that good. And I really wanted a good night's sleep. And about 1 o'clock in the morning, in comes Phil with Bridget. Okay, I'm here, she's there, he's there. So now we got three hours of, oh, Philip, oh, Philip, are you mad? Do you think of a tart? Oh. I want to get to sleep. So I got three hours of this. Next morning we go down for breakfast. <laughs> I find out that Mark brought back a girl, and McGovern was with them, but McGovern went to his room with Mark and the girl. And so I say to McGovern, you know, fucking John, not for nothing, but why didn't you just come to my room and let them be in their room? McGovern goes, I wanted to watch. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> in such a bar and ask for Sheena. <laughs> it was at the World Cup or something. You couldn't get a seat in the bar. We had finished our uh, round at St. Andrews. It was 8 o'clock at night. We were starving. I said, Sheena, hi, I'm Jimmy. I'm a friend of Tommy Reardon's. And she said, just step right this way. <laughs> <laughs>
You guys enjoying this? Yeah, we are. It's great. Old head. Big yep. engine. There's old head number 12. So far, we've had 72 different guys on the Wild Colonial Boys oh, trip, yeah. wow. Wow. playing 25 golf courses in two countries, you know, which is pretty cool. Of those 72 guys, four guys are no longer with us, so I'd like to take a moment of silence to remember Eddie Wright, uh, Jack Fitzgerald, J.J. Donovan, and our pal Stevie Gardner. Uh, of the 72 guys, by my calculations, about 44 were Irish. Um, <laughs> and then there were another 15 or so half Irish. By my count, we've had uh, two Reardons, two Dunnermans, and of course two Mages. Two rights. Two rights. I'm sorry, I had that down. Two rights. We've had uh, football coaches, hockey coaches, in fact, NCAA champion hockey coaches yes, on our trip. Mm. And of course, we've had Mass murderers. <laughs> <laughs> We've stayed in B and B. And the governor. And the governor. governor. Mm -hmm. And the governor. One great bus driver. Not a bus driver. He's a lifeguard. <laughs> yeah, the bus driver doesn't do him justice. He's a nanny. He's an enabler and a caretaker <laughs> and sometimes a counselor. <laughs> uh, we've stayed in B&Bs, we've stayed in hotels, and we've stayed in palaces. Uh, so we've been a lot of places, and one of the things I was thinking about is we've taken pisses in some of the greatest places in the world. Alleyways, roadsides, taverns, and just <laughs> the most beautiful country got it. And you didn't miss any of it. <laughs> But how did we get from 1987 to 2007? We got there obviously only one way, and that was through the unbelievable organizational skills of Tommy yeah. and his networking and, and reaching out and uh, keeping us in line and, and keeping us connected. So everybody goes hats off to Tommy. Here, here, Tommy. Here, Tommy. You come here hoping for three things, I think. You hope for uh, certainly good weather, good golf, and mostly good guys. And uh, in 2007, we hit it out of the park again, so. Okay. <laughs> boys for his second best rookies with fours. And best of all is the mythic supreme. He's not tall, he's not lean, but he's the best man on our team. <laughs> Most of you, my story about losing my golf clubs and my clothes and all that stuff. And it's great to have, as somebody said earlier, a babysitter. So uh, it's my pleasure on behalf of the Wild Colonial Boys to present Steve with a little thank you for all your efforts in making this trip easy for us. Thank you. I wouldn't say it gets any easier, but. Uh, this particular year, we've had a good cross section of guys. We've had eight, uh, what I would call virgins, first time. <laughs> had, to be, had to be nurtured and treated kindly and bring them on the small bit. And then, of course, they're given the, the big tasks of being missing, apparently, and superb. Okay, one of the guys that did his bib, Tom knows what we're talking about. <laughs> his, his, day, his day of judgment will come. <laughs> 
Absolutely super. Delighted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. The Wild Colonial Boys isn't about golf. It's about the Wild Colonial Boys. It's about the Wild Colonial Boys. It's about the Wild Colonial Boys. And, you know, this week was interesting. I played the best golf I've ever played in my life. And I took a lot of heat about being 15. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Wild Colonial Boys, it's a concept. And, you know, to Tommy, uh, you know, we toast you a lot. And, and we, we raise our glasses. But you, you've created something that I think is so deep in so many of our lives. So. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, it's great that 20 years ago, Peter, Bernie, myself came over here. And it's great that you know we're all together. Uh, my best friend right here, Dolph, went to school together. <laughs> He's got a lot more stories. Thanks, Peter, for coming. Brother Ed, thank you. Um, this to me is such a great time. I think one of the great things about him is there's a, there's a core group that I come back and I see a year or two later and get a chance to you know talk to and have a great time and they're all a great group of guys. But then every trip there's a new group of guys that comes in and you know last time I, I was on the trip I thought man these guys were great and then this group was like unbelievable right so it's you, you get the opportunity to be with great group of guys that you know, and then you get a chance to meet a whole new great group of guys. A year ago, Easter Sunday, I won't make this quite as long as Joel. Uh, <laughs> Impossible I was, I to do that. Terry. <laughs> I was with Terry, and I said, Terry, any chance you'd like to come with us on our next trip? The Wild Clone of the Boys are going back. I said, if I can get on the trip, I'd love to go. So I called Tommy the next day. I said, you know what? I have a great guy who I think would be great to the trip. And it was just awesome to spend a week with Terry. Yes. And I got to tell you something. Anybody can take all the Ted Bundy, yeah. right? <laughs> Peter, the apostles, the apostles, because to me, watching the two of them interact and how much they enjoy this entire trip being brothers is something that I think we all admire and in life. Uh, I think that when it comes to family, there's not a lot more important than that. And I can see the love they have for each other. Top three. Ron Malott, plus four. Very All nice. Right, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. A lot of good golf today out there. Joey Friedman, plus seven. Joey! Oh, Joey. Joey. Joey! And this year's champion, and leader, and holder of the cup, Greg Downs. Hey, that's And I want to hear more about all your kids after I bore the living shit out of you telling you about mine. <laughs> this, again, <laughs> cleverly disguised. <laughs> 5 a.m. flights. And I'd like to see them get, you know, like maybe a half hour power nap. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they don't, I'm not one of them, so I really don't care. But, I want to see the entire nightclub act tonight, and I want to get rid of some specialty items that we have here. So, in fact, it's a scratcher, okay? And I know during our existence we're all confused to the point we don't understand anything, something, and instinctively you scratch and you wonder and you wonder and you scratch and you're trying to look for something that can justify uh, maybe a perceived imbalance or maybe a confusing situation. <laughs> this is designed so that you can scratch your head, you can scratch your nuts, <laughs> you can scratch your ass for the rest of your life. You will never, ever understand how Joel got to be a 15. <laughs> Joel! These are called Perforated practice ball. It's even spelled out in French, in case you want to become continental. <laughs> They're not practice balls at all. They're just symbols of something that looks like something that it's not. Okay. You would think from what's in this package that there's a lot of content here. There's actually a lot of worth. When in fact, the package is full mostly of air. The wiffle balls, sure, there's lots of perforations. 
and the symbolism that I see here, and I recognized immediately an analogous situation to the symbols that are in this package. There's only one Richard. Every time I see with very little enthusiasm, his duties as either Mr. <laughs> Law Committee Chairman, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. <laughs> full of symbolism, with no content. <laughs> full of responsibility, with no activity. <laughs> Richard, go get him. <laughs> Sincerely, I want to say Richard. Here. Thank you, Dolph. Good job, Richard. He picked his <laughs> Don't ever change. <laughs> There's only one Richard. Here. My exterior is an 18 hole counter. <laughs> Rapid improvement from someone we know has all of the talent to become a much better player and to take it to the next level. He's got the greatest laugh I've ever heard. 99% of the time, he's a terrific guy, and <laughs> hey, who's not a pain in the ass 1% of the time? <laughs> this is something that's eventually going to tell us a story, and it's, the story is going to be tracked by an accounting person that's uh, our uh, second favorite CPA uh, <laughs> as a domer. You know, Greg said it right. You take your cell phone and you turn it off and you put it in your bag and you just enjoy this country and this game of golf. So, whether there's a trip, if there's a trip, we probably won't get together again. But we can always have, you know, Jimmy's pictures of Paul CBD and the memories in our, you know, in our brain that we look back on with such fondness. So, it was, Cheers. A, great, it was a great weekend. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Peter. But one of the coolest things about what you guys offer to me, I see people who just love golf. But I never really took up golf till six years ago, and I'm committed to get better. And one of these days, I'm going to beat Peter Dalton when we're on one of these trips. Uh, but You're I, am, I am very kind of inspires me, and thank you for sharing that with me. All right, cool. All right, John. Crockett. Uh, the committee wants to present you with something that on the raw exterior might look like a stroke counter. <laughs> and it's really not for the number of strokes that we think you could have had just by traveling with your, with your roomie. <laughs> this is so that you can count the number of times fewer that JP has to deal with anger management <laughs> in the days to come. JP on the raw exterior, this might look like a wire brush complete cleaner. It's actually not. This is an anger management tool. When you get the urge, whenever you get the urge, to spew profanity at the top of your lungs at I did great not, lengths. I did I not. I don't know, maybe you're controlling the urge. I know, no, I'm not saying that you did. I'm, I'm not saying that you will. I'm saying that there's a lot better chance that you won't <laughs> if, in fact, you use the Acme.